Hello everyone and welcome back to Anything Joe's, a collaborative journey through the world of G.I. Joe. My name's Greg Engel. And I'm Jaron Decker. And we'll be your host today. Today on Anything Joe's, we're going to take a look at uh, even more new G.I. Joe content. Today's episode is brought to you by the letter P. That is P, short for poverty, as in two G.I. Joe <laughs> podcast enthusiasts that are completely broke. Um, so Hasbro Pulse did their big PulseCon reveal. And they showed a bunch of new toys for a bunch of different, almost every line they got a, uh, they got their thumb in. And of course, GI Joe was. They even showed Ghostbusters, which was a, a sad, sad sight. They had some uh, a very for a dude that has given up the toy game, the non GI Joe toy game. They had some stuff that I was actually really enticed by. Uh, that Hellfire Club X Men set was mm -hmm. was very very cool looking and uh that ghostbusters uh the the ecto one that they're releasing so it's it's plasma series which is their one twelfth scale figures right mm -hmm. so i saw it and i was like oh heck yeah this is great everyone was like sweet a one twelfth scale ecto one no it's one eighteenth but they didn't say that so is there no figure line that not as of right now that's really no. that's really weird <laughs> Yeah, so everyone was watching the video and like, man, that looks really small. And then later, uh, someone noticed on the front of the box, it says 118th scale. Mm. But they never officially said it, at least from the coverage I'd watch. I'd watch a few people talking about it. Maybe they were just like, hey, this is so your Ghostbusters feel really insignificant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so we're going to talk about all the stuff that they showed at PulseCon. And we're going to take a kind of a deep dive into the well, what our feelings are on the figures, just like always. So let's start with the the normal stuff that everybody had a chance to buy. Uh, and that's the stuff that's going to be sold <laughs> to all major retailers. And it uh, was available through the Hasbro website. And that's going to start with the G.I. Joe Classified Cobra Infantry Action Figure. So... As I'm sure everyone is well aware, there was a Target release for a Cobra Infantry figure as part of the Cobra Island set, and nobody got one. Uh, it's a, Or you got 25 of them, and you are posting pictures of them every day because you, <laughs> really, did, you really have the time to do the legwork. In which case, bravo, I guess. So... <laughs> We had re we had reported on the rumor that this was coming earlier, and it, obviously this is confirmation of that. And it's no surprise that they made some subtle changes to it, not because they want to separate it from the Target exclusive, but that the deal with Target probably has some kind of ink that says this has to always be exclusive to us. So they have to deviate from the formula a little bit in order to be like, well, we still gave you an exclusive. Jaron, what are your, as a troop builder enthusiast, what do you, what are your feelings on this re-release? I love it. You know, as we were talking about it, I was kind of really trying to dive in and, and really delve deeper into what the differences are. And I think you're, you're definitely hitting the nail on the head. Like they, they target probably has some kind of verbiage that says, Hey, this is going to be ours and you can't make anything different. Cause I even thought that when they announced it is okay. Why didn't they just say it was the Cobra trooper as well? Just the non, but no, it's probably because target wants it before I get really into kind of some of the differences. I just want to say, man, Hasbro killed it on this whole pulse con. Like, like, I love the way that they did it. Other than a few minor hiccups there, it went off pretty pretty smoothly. And I was able to get everything I wanted without really stressing on their side. Now, some of their partners, um, actually just Target, it seemed like, did really poorly. Because I was even able to get some of the other lines that I collect, uh, some of the Star Wars exclusives from other companies, no hassle. But, I mean, PulseCon, like, I am okay if we just want to keep doing this from now on. Everyone can look at them see their stuff let me yeah let me speak to that also for a little bit so this is what works about the hasbro pulse website number one limit of one per customer hey that's a great idea uh, yeah. because it's essentially us the fans versus them the scalpers and if that means i can only get one cobra infantry action figure in the interest of preventing people that are going to resell them that's fine i will i'm i'm okay mm -hmm. with that doesn't even factor in the fact that these are sold out so with the limit of one and they implemented other steps to keep bots away, They there was still enough to get one per customer. Now, I'm not mm -hmm. saying there is no deviation from that. I'm sure there are people that are like, well, I'm going to make 25 accounts or whatever, and they probably don't have the team to like bust that up. But as a general rule, the figure was up for an affordable amount of time for the average person to get one figure. 
And the other thing is they added a CAPTCHA. Hello, that's a great idea because a CAPTCHA prevents bots. If other websites had that, which is a very low, you know, it doesn't take long to do if you're a real human being. I was ordering these in a parking lot on my phone with no Wi-Fi and was still able to correctly identify all the fire hydrants so I could <laughs> pre-order the two figures that I wanted and it went and it went fine. Considering the amount of traffic and the things that we've had to endure, I would agree with everything you said, Sharon. This was a very smooth process that other places could learn from and doesn't seem like it would be that challenging to implement. Yeah, it's not like we're asking the world. We're right. Not. It's just simple 21st century online measures that you're supposed to take as a retailer. You know, it's just, it's asinine that, that companies aren't doing that. And it's infuriating and there's a lot of, of feelings and I totally understand them. In fact, this figure is actually still up on some some sites. Not, not necessarily on Pulse. Pulse is sold out. So hopefully that means that Pulse will come first. The one you get from Pulse will come first and early. That's unlikely. Um, you, <laughs> no, no. It's... It, <laughs> For all the good that they've done, holy cow, they are they are delayed. I probably still would be waiting for my uh, Garlet and Duke if I had waited for them. But like you can still go on Big Bad Toy Store on Dorkside and places like that and go and pre-order as many as you want. So I think that's great. I like actually, I, and the more I kind of look at it, I like this version actually even more than the Target exclusive. But but I'm going to go ahead and touch on a few of the differences. So the first thing you're going to notice, no armband to denote their rank. Mm-hmm. That was something that's going with the Cobra Island exclusive. You have the the kind of snake-eyed goggles. Those are going to be staying with the, the Target exclusive. The Nerf sniper rifle, that's going to be staying with Target exclusive. Those are the kind of accessories that are going to be exclusive. And then you have the coloring that's different. So this is not as drastic as I thought. I honestly thought that it was going to be that the regular release was almost going to be Regal variant of Cobra Commander Blue. Like, I thought it was going to be that bright. Mm -hmm. I'm glad it's not. This is a more muted, almost, I I don't even know really what the word, like a cobalt maybe? I don't know. It's a cool looking color. I actually like this color. And then they changed the webbing, the torso gear, um, which once again is a positive in my mind. The Cobra Island is all blacked out and it's just, there's not a lot of paint apps on it. It just looks like a black blob. And in fact, on the The promotional artwork, even the little under torso speedo looking thing was black, which on the actual figure, at least all the ones that I have are all blue on the the little the little speedo joint but the webbing has like really cool gray highlights like where the straps are so it actually looks like it's a different piece and then it still has the holsters that are a different color and one of my favorite just pieces on any of the figures on both and it's on both is the knife if you look on it you see kind of a cobra mouth it's a small detail but it's so cool looking such a cool little little nod um, and then you, if you look on like the knee pads, those are like that lighter blue. And then there's like a gray underneath it, which on the Cobra Island version is all black. And then the boots are, it, it almost looks like everything is just moved up a shade from on the regular release. So the blacks on the regular, or on the Cobra Island are the dark blues and, and things like that. There is enough difference that you can tell which, which one it is easily, but they work together. Like you're not going to, it's, they're going to fit. So for me, my plan is I'm going to, I'm going to use one of my Cobra troopers. I removed his black webbing and I've got his armband on. You can check it out on our Instagram. I just posted a picture of the snake Supreme Cobra commander with a couple troopers. And those are the Cobra Island ones. One of them has his chest gear removed. I'm going to keep him, and I'm going to probably... I have seven pre-ordered right now of the <laughs> standard Cobra infantry. And, and so I'm going to make them kind of an eight-man squad. And then my uh, I've got two others that I, I fought hand and tooth for, or whatever the expression is, the other Cobra, Cobra troopers. I'm going to keep those with my uh, Snake Supreme Cobra commander, or Coco, as some people say. Uh, I don't understand the hate for that. That's a, a super controversial thing that has certainly come out of nowhere. Like, I didn't, like, I just always, like, said it, like, when we were messaging, because we understood, but I didn't realize such vitriol came from that. Yeah, so if you're not familiar with that, there's been a recent weird Facebook outbreak of people that are somehow really offended by people using the term Coco for a uh, shortening of Cobra Commander. Maybe offended isn't the right word, but they feel like it's ridiculous. I'm not going to go into it, but it's not. You call them whatever you want. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is ridiculous, but it's it's a fun ridiculous. I mean, you 
call them CC if you want. I don't yeah. Know. How many do you have pre-ordered, Greg? I have three total pre-ordered. I got my one okay. through Hasbro Pulse. I got two extra through Big Bad Toy Store. If I had known Roma Collectibles was going to do that case deal, I would have gotten that. But I thought, man, I'm already three deep. I better wait because who knows? Maybe I'll actually be able to find these on the shelf since they're not a retailer exclusive. And to speak to your uh, comments about the color change, it, this does, I have no issues with this figure. I should say that up front. I think this is a great deal for everybody. It's an opportunity to get more figures. None of the changes are substantial to me in any way. Although I am a very broad picture person when it comes to stuff like this, when the little details like this don't hardly ever stand out to me. As a matter of fact, if I mix this with the other Cobra Trooper, I, in a day, I wouldn't be able to tell which one was which anymore. <laughs> and speaking to the the changing of the color, if you go back to the early days of G.I. Joe, when they actually only really had a, a kind of a Cobra officer mold, they would remake him and just and usually just change like the emblem. Like there was a Cobra Viper pilot and there's a Cobra officer. And they so maybe the Cobra logo would be silver instead of red and they'd use the same mold. But a lot of those used a much darker blue that that you're seeing in this figure the, the it's like a, that borderline gray really mm -hmm. so there's nothing ridiculous about the color scheme that they've chosen for this figure at all and again if it means that it is more readily available then i'm all for it i think this is a good call and i think when we talk about the cobra viper coming up the, that's the next logical step for that as well as far as the missing accessories go don't care i only need one <laughs> i only need one armband i'm only going to have one leader and the guns and stuff are, are probably i'm probably going to replace that stuff down the line with marauders task force weapons anyway i do like the detailing on the knife like you said like there's still a lot of little things about it but yeah my, my bottom line on this is that it's a win all together it was handled in a as a responsible a way as could be done it doesn't substantially deviate from the figure we already loved and I think it's great. I have heard a lot of people talking that the Target exclusive will continue to go up in value or will still be a high in demand figure. I'm not sure how much I subscribe to that theory, but if that means more people are tracing after that and leaving the stuff that I actually want, then that's fine. I don't need a dozen of these guys, but I would like to get a small handful for the just for the display slash you know toy photography purposes. A, a reasonable amount. Everybody has a weird number in their head. I saw people coming into the cover trooper fiasco and being like, I gotta have 25 of them. And I'm like, man, you either have a lot of time or a lot of money because mm -hmm. that is a tremendous effort. And so I do think this will alleviate the cost of it. Do I think the Cobra Trooper, the Target exclusive one, is ever going to be in a really obtainable price range? I don't, actually. Based on what we're seeing on with current trends otherwise, even the retro line is demanding double retail right now. And while that might just be like new toy hijinks, I think that... The, the second hand price on this is not, it's going to take a long time to kind of bottom out. You know, Greg, I got two more things to say about this before we move on. Sure. One, uh, I did forget to mention that they also changed the, they kept calling it the ink jet on the face. Mm -hmm. uh, I had never heard of it referred to as that, and it might just be something I missed. Um, but they did make it a darker and more of a tan. Um, I've heard a lot of people uh, saying that he's this version is the Hispanic version, which, hey, you know what? Representation matters. But the other one is very white. So uh, it's cool that they change it up so it'll look better. Also, as a side point, this is not my second point. My side point is that I also only leave the goggles on one of them. So I'm, I, I like the face printing on it, so I leave the goggles off of the other two that I have. And then my second point is, man, I really wish I sh would have kept two of those in the box so I could sell them and get, like, what, five... Co uh, of these for the price of one Cobra Island one? Yeah. I mean, it was, it was a, it's a double-edged sword because you're like, well, if I had an extra one, I could have traded or sold it and got a bunch more of these. But then on the other side, I'm like, well, if I had one more, then I'd have one more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's true. I would have opened it up and not thought about it immediately. I will speak to the diversity portion of this that I would have loved to have seen something like this where they, it doesn't necessarily have to be a variant, but if they had just randomly done like a, a black Cobra Trooper, or I know that's a remolding, but at some point I'd like to see female Cobra Troopers, which is something mm -hmm. that we didn't get in the modern line almost until the very end. 
of course there's females in Cobra. Make some women figures out of them. So, I, I, yeah, I think that that is something that I'd like to see more of. Okay, so let's move on to the second figure in the wave, which is Zartan. So, essentially, this entire podcast only exists so I can talk about this figure. <laughs> As I am sure most people have heard by now, this figure is not only well-received and justifiably so, it is... God, it's so good. It's so good. There's so much. There's so many things right about this figure. Uh, his gun looks like his version one gun, or at least a facsimile of it. His backpack with the mask in it, also a nod to the version one figure. His colors are correct. They're like a dull down brownish black. They made him right in every way. On the older figures, the Zartan would always have this. He has that chest piece. But in a weird way, it would connect with his shoulder pads. And in this, now that it's a separate piece, it looks more functional and you get a better sense of understanding of like how his armor works. His cowl is removable, which isn't something that you got from a lot of the early figures. He has the the knee pads that were originally like the clear pieces that were lost very easily. This figure is just a great tribute to the original Zartan. And I mean, he's, he's a beauty. If I had to make any complaint, it would... Would only be that I wish his chest piece and his leg pads were see-through because the original Zartan had it's not like glass but it was like a transparent because that's where his some of his color change stuff was at speaking of color change I guess they originally put out in the copy that this Zartan would would change color in sunlight like the original which is a great idea but they've since gone back and said whoops our bad <laughs> He, he not do that. I don't know if that was something that they had planned originally and they forgot to cut it out or if they were literally just copying and pasting old data and they never had the intent. Would have loved to have seen that, but I'm not going to let that hold back what is otherwise a, one of the best figures. Maybe I maybe like this even better than the Baroness, which I think was a was a spot on figure. He His belt buckle has this like Diablo skull looking thing. Just a lot of really great nuances in this figure that sell it, I think. What are, you, what are your thoughts on this? He looks great. I do wonder if this is, if originally Zartan was going to look different, but because of the feedback based on the original images from one, because this, this one seems like it is straight up, hey, look, you loved Zartan, here's Zartan. Whereas with the, you know, the first wave and even the second wave to an extent, you know, everything still had that kind of futuristic look that they were going with. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't look as much of like an amalgamation of, hey, look, it's classic, but also, hey, look, it's it's based off of the art from this video game or, you know, whatever they may have done. The gun, perfect nod. I do wonder what's up with the, the snake hand and the other, because at first I thought it was replaceable hands or interchangeable hands. Now now I realize those are just to be held. Those aren't pegs. So it looks like a little, like a monkey hand and then a snake hand. I'm going to guess that this is a nod to his like swamp living life. Like that's a, he had hunted a snake maybe. Okay. And I don't know about the monkey's paw thing. Yeah. Cause it like is attached to him. Like it's on his like backpack and the other's on his belt. Yeah. I see that. Yeah. Yeah, because I was looking through it and I was like, what is that? And I was like, oh, that's a that's a cobra and then like a like a monkey hand. The weird thing about that is they are built to attach to the pegs when it seems like they would have made more sense to just be molded onto the belt. Because mm -hmm. they do look kind of awkward with that, that stud to attach them to things on the end. Yeah, I could probably do without that. A snake head is one thing, okay? Sure, you're in a swamp, you kill a snake. Did you kill a monkey? <laughs> Maybe the monkey was trying to steal his snake. And did you keep his hand? <laughs> Maybe he didn't kill him. Maybe he just chopped his hand off and was like, well, this is mine now. Maybe it's a fatal Fluffy's hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, one of the other things that I thought was really cool is the, the mask that he comes with. Mm -hmm. um, they said during the reveal that it fits both under his hood and without his hood, and it'll fit snugly on it. Yeah, this mask also looks a lot like the version 1 mask that came in his backpack, so again, I appreciate that detail. However, here's my first question, and this was my question in the in the early 80s also. Who's this mask supposed to be? Is that supposed to be Gung-Ho? Mm, I hope not, because that's obviously not Gung-Ho. Well, sure it isn't, because he has no pupils. <laughs> it's not even like cut out like Halloween mask style. I'm to believe that he puts that on over his face and somehow people don't go hey are you storm from the x-men the only other person i know that doesn't have pupils so i do feel weird about that oh and also although i do love it there's a great promo shot where he's like holding it in his hand and he's getting ready to put it on the commonly accepted continuity for zartan is that he has ha 
hologram technology that allows him that's how he does his disguise work although there are some there's some deviation from that so i'm not saying this is outside the acceptable realm of what he should come with but he's only got one mask so he can only pretend to be one dude <laughs> and that's i don't i don't like that i like that the i would have liked to have seen him come with a couple of masks that look like actual joes and that doesn't even factor in the fact that if you look like zartan does and then you put on duke's face Somebody's not going to go, hey, Duke, <laughs> that's an awesome Zartan outfit that you're wearing. Where did you get that cool Diablo belt buckle? Or even just his body shape. Because even if he tried to put on Zartan, it looks like he's got like the gung-ho body. Mm-hmm. Like he is a lot bigger. Yeah. <laughs> so it'd be like, oh, hey, Duke, you uh, gained 100 pounds of muscle <laughs> overnight. Uh, I think that's why the hologram theory works a lot more. Not just because it's from the Larry Hama universe that most people tend to accept as, as the generalized canon, but... Because it's it makes sense from a practical reason where he one mask doesn't you have to be a pretty great master of disguise to sell it. This is just my uh, this is just my Halloween costume. Yeah. Can I say in that picture that face is one of the best looking action figure faces. Period. Like that he he looks menacing but not in like an overtly muscle twirling like uh you don't want to mess with this guy and his eyes are amazing. Yeah, it's perfect in my opinion. If you, if you are listening to this and you'd like to check out these images, you can see this exact same content on our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on our YouTube channel, hi, you're already here. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah, I don't really have anything else to add to this Zartan. I could talk all day about how much I love about it, and I only have the minorest of things to say. I do wish his cowl was a little bit more uh, streamlined, because he's got some kind of weird, like, I don't really know what you would call that, but there's something that goes around the edges of it, like the horseshoe shape. And then that mm-hmm. center strike also, it's like glossy compared to the flatness. Again, these are uh, the minor some complaints. You know, it also it also has some somewhat of that uh, the Arctic Storm Shadow vibe with that that headpiece. Like it's just a little bit oddly shaping, I would say. Because mm-hmm. um, like I had to take Storm Shadows off. It was just throwing me off the way it fit on him, and I think that's all it is. It's just the way it fits on the figure looks a little bit off. Yeah, but once again. He looks great. Even with that on, he looks great. But I, I don't know. I love the way he looks with it on. Yeah, he's great. He's going to be a hit. And I'm glad he's not an exclusive. So I was actually able to pre-order him. <laughs> I've got two of him pre-ordered. Just in, I, I'm treating this as like a, okay, well, who am I going to go through predominantly? Even though I know that's just weird thinking, considering it's really on a case-by-case basis. Mm-hmm. Um, but I've got figures from all of these waves pre-ordered like the cobra trooper i've got three at Dorkside, three at big bad and then the pulse one and we'll see which one comes first you're really playing those vegas odds man you're like which one of these guys is going to deliver first yeah and the, and whoever does on this one they're gonna they're i'm i'm gonna swear my fealty to them i don't blame you uh <laughs> i would love to find an online re- retailer that delivered just in an appropriate amount of time or one that you could you know access the items that they say that they're selling for in faster than two seconds. Hey, that's a great transition to our next product, which is the two Target exclusives, the Cobra Viper. Looking at this figure just now, I've I've noticed that this has been a reoccurring theme where people are review bombing the figures on the Target <laughs> website. I did not realize that. The Cobra Viper has a 129 reviews at one star. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's hard to... Oh, man, these comments are blowing up. Oh, heck yeah, they are. Bots and scalpers, <laughs> bad. Collectors, good. Sad day. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to let you talk about this figure first because you're the resident troop builder. Have we come across a Cobra Viper in our discussions prior to this? I don't think we have. Maybe in tertiary conversations and things like that, but Mm -hmm. not a lot. I want to say that there were probably some in our recapped episode because that was the closest thing we've got to current continuity in the G.I. Joe comics. So as someone that's coming in kind of blind to easily the most used Cobra Army Trooper, what's your thoughts on this guy? The the general design of this character is awesome. He gives me, he simultaneously gives me Stormtrooper-esque vibes. He gives me Spartans from Halo vibes, but also just like SEAL Team 6 vibes. Like, this guy goes in, he does his job, he gets things done, and he bounces. He looks really cool. I don't know if any of that's true, but he looks like he could kick butt. Yeah, the Cobra Viper is, like, these guys really are 
truly the stormtrooper of the G.I. Joe universe. Whereas the Cobra Troopers and Cobra Officers were the first created army builder, when the Viper came out in the, I'm going to say the 86 era, somewhere there, don't don't at me, <laughs> they really phased out the other troopers for them. And justifiably so, because the Cobra Troopers are very bland. I'm just a kind of a faceless dude. And the Vipers had a lot more personality and a lot more style in their outfit. I uh, have mixed feelings about this figure, if I'm being honest. I think that they got a lot of things right with this figure, but at the same time, when I look at this figure, it doesn't exactly scream Viper to me. And if I have to put a pin in why, my eyes are constantly drawn to that this web gear that he's got on his torso. Mm -hmm. There's something about that that's blocking the general aesthetic of the Viper. Because a Cobra Viper typically doesn't have quite that much black on. And I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm looking at the like geared down version. But the version with the, like, the goggles, I think, is a must. See, I think I think for me at least... I think if they had matched the actual artwork, it would have looked a lot better. So if you look at the artwork, the grenades are different colors. And I know that you can't expect them to paint every single little thing. Mm -hmm. But there is a lot of red and black there in the middle, and it kind of breaks up the figure. So if they had maybe, if they had left a pathway of that blue maybe, or had like that kind of, you see where it looks almost like a, like, a, like, a, like the one part is folded over it? Mm -hmm. If maybe the underpiece was blue or, or the overpiece, like if they had picked one, as the blue and made it look a little maybe that could have broke it up a lot and another thing like the helmet itself like i don't know what it is it might be because they did the same thing they did with cobra commander where they kind of brought it in like mandibles just a little bit too much like it, it just comes together just a little too close for me and then i don't like the red on the inside now on the outside i think that looks cool but that red on the inside just it kind of throws me off a little bit don't get me wrong if i ever get lucky enough to find one of these i will buy it but who knows yeah so i am very forgiving when it comes to the modernization of figures i feel like it is maybe not necessary but understandable that you want to move a figure's design forward so i'm going to give you an example of what i think is a good a good portion of that and a bad portion of that a good example of this is they've added a scarf to this figure that goes around his neck and it's a very small detail and it's not something that the Vipers have normally traditionally had. Uh, but I like it. It's fine. It's great. It works good. It's uh, kind of something that you see more and more in uh, combat-based figures. Fine. I, gray, maybe not the best choice, but because it stands out as the only gray thing really on him. <laughs> but it doesn't bother me. I think it's fine. Now, to touch on your other point, something that I don't think is good is the touches of red that they've added to this helmet, which is a new, that's a new addition. The inside lining being red, I do not like. Those two splashes of red that are like on the left and right of the front of the faceplate, no mm -hmm. thank you. <laughs> it doesn't look good at all. And the detailing doesn't back that up. Like there's, it doesn't look like they cut out little grooves there and then painted them red. It looks like they've just added like a splash of red there. And the inside lining being red, also I don't really see the point in that other than they felt the need to just add more paint apps. Doesn't add anything to the figure. Takes away from what makes the, the original figure so great. So yeah, I do still want these, but I want everything. So... But I don't think they knocked this out of the park quite as well as they did the Cobra Trooper. The Cobra Trooper was a tired and true formula that they paid homage to, but were also able to bring it forward and modernize it in a way that fans were very receptive to. I don't think the Viper quite captured that, but I'm still talking like this is still B minus territory in terms of, you know, how they did it. And and to that credit, if we down the line get the similar treatment that the Cobra Trooper is getting right now, maybe that stuff will be patched up a little bit or will look better. Or maybe they'll be responsive to feedback, mine specifically, and <laughs> they'll uh and they'll make some adjustments that'll make him look even better i would it would be nice to see a figure that's the, the non-exclusive figure become kind of like the ultimate or definitive version as opposed to people given the exclusive preferential treatment which makes it even harder to get yeah i totally agree i uh i'm uh, you know at first i was thinking okay i'm gonna snag as many of these as i possibly can but honestly i would be okay with having one of these for a while and then seeing what comes of the second one like i think it looks really cool and don't get me wrong if i actually saw them i would buy them but to me i don't feel like the need to claw and fight for these like i did with the cobra troopers 
I definitely feel like that this is overshadowed by both of these exclusives are okay, but the non-exclusive figures are superior in my opinion. Yes. Even the trooper, which is basically a reissue, I'm still more motivated to get than than a bunch of these guys. I just want to get one to keep in the box and maybe one to open, kind of my normal formula. Whereas Cobra Troopers, I'm still kind of in a an a wall. I will buy them anywhere I see them type phase. Yeah. Um, another thing that I don't think we had mentioned at any point yet is it looks like the, I believe this is the figure that they mentioned it on. They, they cut a hole in the front of the rifle for blast effects, but also the removable mag, which they had for, for a uh, roadblocks gun, which it was a little bit different. Cause what kind of mag was it really feeding? Cause what kind of bullets does that thing shoot? fair that that gun is so big and that magazine is so small it could hold like what two three bullets before you'd have to reload it at, at sure. that size um but this one actually looks really cool it, it, i mean granted i will still end up getting marauders task force guns to go with it because i love their weapons i did i missed the fact that they were adding the blast effects do you think that that's something that they will sell their themselves at some point or i feel like they did it mostly just to give you a use for them with all of the marvel legends because they think you know they know that you're going to cross collect now i could see them maybe including it in the future if if it's you know pretty well received but it does from one of the pictures, it's the one of the two Vipers kind of standing side by side. It looks like you can kind of see a hole there mm -hmm. for some of the small blast effects. Nothing big like the repulsor blasts uh, on some of the, the Iron Man. But some of them, some of the smaller ones, like for the hands and stuff, I think could fit. Uh, all right, so let's move on to the other Target exclusive, and that is Firefly. This is the figure that I have the m probably the most mixed feelings about. I feel like there are a lot of good things about this figure and a lot of bad things about this figure. So let me start with what I like about this figure. I, first of all, I like that they're making Firefly. Uh, <laughs> a, a great figure, a highly demanded character, you know, is a well-liked character. I love the facial expression on this Firefly. If a, something about that mold where his eyes are emoting substantially, you can see the kind of the detailing of his nose and his mouth underneath the mask. This is what I like about a six inch line is that it gives creators and, and designers the ability to do a little bit more detail work. And, and this is a perfect example of the payoff on that. I do, I do think so. I think that the overall sculpt of the figure is, is great. I also really like the accessory set that comes with him. It's very, it's straight lined. The goggles are something that Firefly has historically come with in previous versions, especially the modern line. Uh, he's got a pack of dynamite that reinforces his saboteur line. And then we've got this this little robot. He's so cute. I don't know what to think about this. I, I guess it's some kind of remote control drone, but it has legs as well as like a VTOL style capability. Mm -hmm. Don't have an issue with it. And I think it's very creative, but in the, in the bizarre and also excellent column, I have put things like, Baroness comes with a robotic snake that shoots a laser, which I think is <laughs> delightful. This thing, on the other hand, am unsure how to utilize it properly. You know, in the second G.I. Joe movie, Firefly had these little Firefly robots that would fly around and blow up. And I actually thought that that was really a creative thing to add to his, like, history. This thing, I'm like... I I don't, I don't know. I guess I got to see it or maybe see some descriptor. And also the, what's the thing directly to the right of that? Uh, that's the, the control pad for the drone. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like a little data pad. Oh, okay. So this, okay. So my opinion is changing now because the drone is holding the dynamite and it's flying in the air. He's going to deliver the payload. Those legs make a little more sense in the, in the sense that they are, they have a purpose. And I guess they maybe move a little bit because they look like they're hooked there, but he looks like he's standing in the picture that I was looking at. Yeah. And he mounts on his backpack, which I think looks cool too. All right. So I, I hate this less. I'd like to see the other side of that pad to see if it has any detailing on it to say, oh, okay, I can see it now. Well, that's not great. It would have been cool if they'd had a sticker or something just to make it look like an iPad screen or, you know, <laughs> just something. Yeah. Yeah. Something other than that weird shape that it has. So, okay. So all of that's the side. Those are, I have mixed feelings about that. Now let me get to the bad. This Firefly figure is very bulky. As I have seen other people report as a saboteur, this is, he's a little too geared up for combat. I'm going to specifically throw out Firefly version 22 
is the first version of this that came to mind. That is the Pursuit of Cobra line that came out in 2010. And he is also really armed to the gills um, for this. So maybe I'm being too harsh uh, on this figure because that gear could come off and he could look pretty sweet underneath it. But don't love that gear. And normally that wouldn't be a huge deal for me, but it takes up a substantial portion of this figure. Not just his torso, but extends downwards. He's got a shoulder pad that's clipped on. He, it's, it's a little much. I don't think that that is such a detractor that it ruins the figure, but I still would have liked to have seen a more streamlined figure uh, that really looked like somebody that's going to be sneaking in and out of places and not have to worry about his shoulder pad getting caught on a vent or something. So I've talked about this at length. Jaron, what, what are your thoughts on Firefly? So you have mixed mixed feelings about it. I have very minor mixed feelings, but I love it. Like, I love the details that they put into, like, his face to make it look like he's singed. They also mentioned that it looks like he was in a rush, so his his hood is not on. So you see, like, kind of the ruffles up on, like, the top. Like, it's not pulled all the way down. I think that looks really cool. I get what everyone says about the, the body armor, especially considering the fact that that's not going to protect you. It's just going to leave you with no limbs. Mm -hmm. um, so, so why wear that if you're not going to have any other armor on? Like, nothing. But I actually think it looks really cool. I have a thing for those big, bulky action figures. So, like, right now I'm collecting a lot of the McFarlane stuff. And my favorite ones of those are the ones that are big and bulky. They have, like, a Batman with a giant suit of armor and Azrael with a suit of armor. I like those kinds. So, for me, like, this is the type that I, if, if it was up to me, I would get, I would make him as bulky as possible. Maybe I probably would have balanced it out and maybe gave him some, like, thigh pads or something to make it look a little more streamlined. Or not streamlined, but a little more consistent that's really the only thing with his body armor that I don't like is maybe giving him some type of like detachable helmet, some thigh pads, something like that. I don't know if he's ever came with a helmet or not, but if they're going to do this full torso body armor shoulder pads, they might as well give him a helmet. So I think it would be cool to give me that option. And also that little drone is so stinking cute. I did <laughs> not think I was going to be saying that when talking about a G.I. Joe action figure. But I, he is amazing. I'm gonna steal him, and he's gonna be a he's gonna be a member of my Joe display as well, because he's just so cute. He shouldn't be doing bad. <laughs> this is a figure that I'm really gonna have to see in person to get to really nail down how I feel about it. If that armor is easily removable, I'll probably feel stronger about it, especially based on that that gigantic collar that comes along with it. But I guess if I ever get one i'll i'll <laughs> see how i feel about it then as it stands i feel like this is one of the lower figures on the totem pole but i am glad that they made a firefly i am still like i'm into it i just think that there's i i need to do a little tweaking on this figure for him to suit my needs you know it, it also it's it's kind of funny that we're talking about this with with him it was also kind of the same way that we felt about uh, with Beachhead, at least. Um, he looked a little bit bulkier in the torso than I think either of us had really wanted. I think, granted, once we got Beachhead in, in hand, he felt a lot better. But I know that was one of my things that I was like, okay, he looks a little bit bigger in the torso. Mm -hmm. um, and then the other thing that as, as we wrap up talking about Classified Series today, their artwork is just phenomenal. I know it's not retro art, which we'll, we'll talk about retro here in a bit, but the, the fact that they're getting all these different amazingly talented artist to come and do these awesome kind of little splotches on the corners it looks amazing and i don't think there's been one yet that i was disappointed with i saw somebody online complaining that they thought that the artwork should all be done in a uniform way to unit to like kind of solidify the line and man i can't think of a worse take than that i completely agree that uh diversifying the styles of art has been something that is really made these stand out i'm always excited to see the reveal of the art uh mm -hmm. many times will when they post it online i'll save it to my phone because i'm so like enamored with it or it'll be my phone background like i have the profit director destro art as my <laughs> wallpaper on my phone because it's it captures the character so well and so many i you're absolutely right there's been no weak instances in these and they're getting true like they're getting true professionals to do the work like tony daniel did one out of this mm -hmm. line just some uh, some really great stuff my only complaint i guess would be that i wish that there were it was even more prominent yeah. my, they use the same generic 
logo on the back of every box, which and and if it was up to me, I would give it the whole back of the box to be that splash. It is hard to compete with the uh, that burst icon that we grew up with from G.I. Joe figures on, on the card art back in the day. And I feel like this is the closest thing that's given that a run for the money and, and I'm all in on that. Oh yeah. And like we're not we're not getting file cards, which they still should use my idea of the app. I think it'd be great. But can you imagine how great these would look if you actually saw them on shelves? Like how cool it would be to like see them on the pegs and look through the art on the side and pick out which ones you wanted. Especially as a kid. Like I would love to be able to take my kids and be like, Hey, let's go buy you a G.I. Joe. Like but right now I can't and that, that speaks volumes about this line. Like as much as we want to support it and let it grow, it's only going to grow as much as Hasbro will support it. And if they don't keep making it up, I mean, don't get me wrong, it's still going to keep going because there's such a, a love for it. But it's not going to hit the strides and it's not going to have legs and become as evergreen as it could as a property. They've made a lot of missteps, but I think this is that's one thing that they got right with a little bit of room for improvement. Before we move to the onto the the new retro line exclusives, we did both get our deluxe Cobra Commander from Hasbro Pulse in. Do you have any quick thoughts on that now that you have it in hand? I was expecting it to be one of my favorite action figures of the year, and I don't know about you, I don't know if you opened it or not, but for me, the moment I opened it, it solidified its case as probably top 10 action figures for the year, if not higher. Yeah, so I will say briefly that I got this figure in, and I won't say that I felt obligated to buy it, but I had gone into it with the mindset that I would maybe regret it if I didn't get it. We both ponied up the money for the Hasbro Pulse Premium, I think, is that mm -hmm. what it's called? Or whatever yep. their club is. And I was extremely skeptical about that. But I went into it with the mentality that be able to purchase it a day early and with the possibility of them selling out, which we now know was an impossibility, it was going to be worth the risk. And it turned out that it came with the greatest perk of all, and that is that they shipped immediately. Yes. So, And if they could do that more often, that would be great. Like, if they... I would I would pay them fifty dollars every year if that's how they did it. They if they could say, Hey look, you get a day early, you get one per person, you're not gonna be scalping these, but hey, if you pay this, you get you part of our membership, we are Hasbro, Hasbro is G. I. Joe, so you will get the G. I. Joes you want. I, I would do that every year. In a heartbeat. For those that are unfamiliar with what we're talking about, let me, I'll just say that the Hasbro Club has got a $50 membership fee. And if you get it, you get free shipping and you're supposed to get exclusive access. And in the case of the Hasbro PulseCon, everybody had a chance, everybody that was a member had a chance to pre order this stuff a day before the general public. And the way that it shook out, which they didn't tell people at the time, was if you were a Pulse member, Maybe not exclusively, but if you pre-ordered it a day, that early day, they shipped them immediately. I mean, I had mine in 72 hours tops. Yep. And then the second day they opened up to the public and it was a unlimited number. You could pre-order as many as you wanted, but it doesn't ship until March. Did you pre-order extras? I did not, and I'll get to that in a second, but I want to just go on record and saying that I now no longer regret paying the $50. <laughs> the, the free shipping will eventually pay for itself but not having to wait that large amount of time was made it uh, is automatically a good write-off in my book so let me get back to what i was saying about this figure i felt obligated to buy this figure because i thought i would regret it if i looked back and didn't get it and there have been many examples where i have felt lukewarm about an exclusive purchased it anyway and then either warmed up to it later or gone back and and thought, oh, well, I wish I, I wish I had pulled the trigger on this because it's so hard to get now. So I'm already buying two Cobra Commanders. I got the regular release. We got the Regal one eventually showing up. So I thought, what am I going to do with this figure? But now that I have it in hand, I feel much different about it. The paint scheme is essentially a new take on the figure. There's really not, there's a, there's a black and red Cobra Commander from the modern line and that's about as close as it gets to this, but especially the design on the torso is extremely detailed and unique. I love the little globe that he comes with, and the, my most favorite thing is that when you open him up, he's already out of the box. As a guy that buys 
opened and unopened figures, that's a big win because I can take him out of the box. I can put him back in the box. <laughs> I don't feel that obligation to get a second one because this is really more of a display piece in my collection. Again, I have two other Cobra Commanders coming. So I uh, <laughs> like being able to have this where I can display him and just kind of like a showcase piece to just like my deluxe snake eyes. I've ultimately at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't really, I have another snake eyes. So I don't feel a strong need to pull this out of the box, especially because the deluxe snake eyes is a, is another beautiful display piece. The box art is great. The detailing is great. All the little things that come with it. So I feel like this figure was a hundred percent worth the money. I'm really glad that I got it. And I don't want another Cobra commander for a while, please. <laughs> I, uh, I did end up pre-ordering another one. Um, but I, I feel the same way. Like I don't, I don't necessarily need it, and I have the regular Cobra Commander, which is a good figure, um, and I'll get the Regal. I'm glad that I didn't wait for the Network one because that was a ripoff. I'm gonna shout that until the end of the time. Uh, Network is the worst thing in the history of ever. Um, still not, still not delivered to most people is what I'm hearing. Really? Yeah. Uh, Network and Target have have combined to create just terrible experiences for way too many people. Mm -hmm. um, granted, I still think Network is somehow worse, but it, it Target is really trying to dethrone them from that. But I will get this, and then who knows what we end up doing with it. Maybe maybe we end up doing something to where we could give it to somebody listening. Yeah, that would be great. We actually do have some giveaway stuff coming up real soon. If you want to see the Deluxe Regal Cobra Commander in action, you can see it right now on our Instagram page. That's Anything Joe's Pod on Instagram. Jaren has been taking some excellent photography with him out in the wild, and I think is a real good way to kind of see him in action. Yes, and there are a few more that I've got on deck that I'll use. I just... My general rule of thumb that I try to follow, and, and I don't always, is that I don't like posting the same figure twice in a row. It's just a weird, uh, weird like uh, superstition with me. I like to, to keep things up because I know with me, I like to see different things. So I want to make sure that everybody gets to see different things. So if you go on our Instagram, check it out. Leave some positive or negative feedback. If you leave positive, I'll love you forever. If you leave negative, you're dead to me. <laughs> So let's, we're going to take a real quick look at the retro line. I know we've talked a little bit about this when they announced it, so we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. This is just now that the pre-orders are live, we've seen some slightly more uh, uh, official photography of it. Uh, and we also kind of know what to expect from the retro line now. I just want to get some real quick impressions on these. So let's look at this roadblock first. This roadblock is a, a throwback to the original roadblock. Uh, with a little dash of the, if you're going to go in the modern era, probably Roadblock version 16 is the closest thing to compare to it. Although the head mold on this is much, much, much better. Still haven't quite captured that Roadblock likeness that I'm looking for. Classified was the same way. Uh, I just... But that this this head is, is straight up. Like, it, it looks identical to the Classified. Yeah, maybe they're trying to, to streamline that and make, give him a more uniform look based on they'll say that they're getting the likeness right because that is the new likeness <laughs> you just can't look at it with the the classic artwork next to it it makes it look really bad that is one definitely the catch is that if you look at the original art roadblock doesn't have a beard at all <laughs> but the renegades roadblock does have these like crazy mutton chops that i think really worked for him so i guess this is kind of that middle ground and that's okay i don't i mean just because it doesn't look the way that i want it to look doesn't mean it's a failure on any level because I think a lot of the other stuff about this figure works very well. It is, I think I can safely go on record and say this is probably the best motor, modern roadblock that they've released. This big new detailing that they keep upselling about the facial painting, I'm, I think you really am starting to see that in action. And I think this wave is a lot more, a lot more freeform than the previous retro wave which in some cases was literally just like here's this old figure here's the new version we put it some, we put some gray on it i think they took there's more creativity in this license and i think that this has a lot of potential for the retro line to continue and still produce great things my ultimate hope is that the retro line branches out substantially from the norm but much like the classified line, I feel like we've probably got to get through some of the staples of the G.I. Joe universe before we get to the, not necessarily obscure, but just some characters that I don't have a whole bunch of already. 
What's your what's your gut take on this? I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on these, but I definitely want to talk about them a little bit. Mine on on most of these are going to be the same. This is this I, I am the target demographic for this. I'm getting into GI Joe. I don't have that connection as much with the regular figures. I mean, I own some older figures, but this is like my jumping on point. It'd be nice if they were easily accessible, just like uh, some of the other things. I got lucky with the Wave One. We've had ours for quite a while now, and some people and they still haven't shipped the pre-orders for them. But uh, I think I think it looks really cool. I agree with you that he's not exactly, especially especially when you look at the picture of the pa- him in package and you look <laughs> right next to him. I get that they're just trying to somewhat pay homage but like there's a there's quite a bit of differences it does seem like maybe it's because he's bigger or what or something it seems like with wave two they've they've really slimmed down on accessories because wave one it was like you want accessories cool well here's four times the amount of accessories and then we're still <laughs> going to give you a few more accessories just to make sure. Yeah, and I would say that maybe that's the right decision. Like, don't waste your plastic on this. I don't need all of this stuff. He can only carry one gun feasibly. Right. Like, he's only going to shoot a gun, maybe two, but then if he has to reload, it's worthless. Yeah. They updated the, like, if you look at the original card art, he's obviously wearing, like, a tank top. and They updated that to sort of like a, I don't know what you would call that vest, but it's a more, like... It has a more physical presence on his figure. Good figure. Looking forward to it. I think this wave is much stronger than the first wave, honestly. So, all right, let's talk about Destro. So, I am looking at a picture of Destro version 29, 2014. It's one of the last figures that came out. It is... I am hard-pressed to find the differences between these two figures. (laughs) Other than some minor, and I do mean minor, paint applications, this figure looks verbatim the exact same. I mean, he's got... His boots are gray instead of black. His paint apps on his chest are different. Gloves are silver instead of black. That's it. Maybe his missiles are a little bit more detailed. Yeah, that is. Wow. His uh, his left arm is different, it looks like. Yeah. The grenades uh, are painted a little bit different. This So that makes me a little less excited. I will say that I do think that this version of Destro is one of the best versions of Destro. Not this figure specifically, but the mold that they're using. Gets a lot of things right. I think the helmet has a more realistic look to it. I think that collar is the most prominent it's ever been and really captures the cartoon appearance. But I, I'm not going to waste a ton of time talking about it because it is essentially a figure that we've already gotten before. Yeah, once again, it to me, hopefully it'll be more easily accessible. Hopefully it doesn't just immediately become hard to find and I miss out on it. I mean, I've got them pre-ordered, so I'll get one eventually. Yeah, d- again, don't I don't have a lot to say about this because we've we've all seen it before. If I miss out on this figure, I would only be disappointed because I enjoy I do enjoy having these on the card because it has the original card art. I'm never going to own an original distro on the card, so this is and this is the next best thing. So that's it. Let's move on to Scarlet. This figure in my opinion is the highlight of the retro wave. I do have one complaint about it. Well, I had two complaints about it. But <laughs> It's still not a reused mold, so they tried, they're trying something new, and for the most part, I think this figure is a success. I will say, without question, this figure is the most, is the strongest deviation from other molds that we've seen. I think the head mold for this is fantastic. Looks great. Scarlet also has one of the best pieces of card art from the older figures that I've seen, so I'm very excited to have basically a reproduction of that. If you look at the, if you're comparing the card art to Scarlet, there are two things that stand out right away. The first is her gloves. Uh, You can see that her gloves are almost to her elbows and the card art, and these are just wrist length, which also means that the, she has throwing stars on the outside. Those have obviously been removed. She has a small pistol that was tucked away in the other. Those are real details that existed on the figure, and those are gone. Um, the, but the thing that this figure is really suffering from is that they used the shooter mold for this, which is essentially just like a shirt or a turtleneck, and they have just painted it, and that includes that red and black like stitching that's on her shoulder, and that is a mistake, <laughs> for lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> much like much like when you look at the figure, the gray that's in the turtleneck comes right down to kind of like the bust. On this one, it's like straight up on her neck. So there's some there's some problems with this character, especially in stark contrast when you can look at the original design of the figure right beside it. But I still give them props for making the effort. Maybe they feel obligated to make a Scarlet because I know that they want this line to tether into the movie, and they 
almost certainly didn't have a Scarlet to fall back on in their wheelhouse right away, so they had to get creative. But I will take this over a Destro that I 100% own any day. <laughs> I would rather I would rather them try something new, make some small mistakes, but at least show that have the fans demonstrate that we're still interested in these. Like keep good effort, keep trying, and eventually, if they increase enough of their tooling, they'll be able to get more and more accurate to that because I, I i can see that they tried with what they had there's just some there's some room for improvement what are your thoughts on the scarlet uh you know pretty similar to my thoughts on the other two like i mean for me it'll be my jumping in point for for the classic or i guess modern size scarlet um i think i think it looks great i don't have any real like i'm not super familiar with any of the other versions of scarlet but i think this is one of my favorite designed female figures especially in that in that size in that uh in the three and three quarter inch scale um once again it looks like they uh, they really slowed down on the uh on the accessories but that's not really a bad thing because i don't i mean there's only so much you can carry like with with baroness i still have most of her accessories in the package even though i've opened it up you sure know, same thing with same thing with uh with uh storm shadow like i have a lot of his accessories like i'm not going to use those unless i plan a picture for it like using that like with the baroness's little um like elevator string thing like unless i plan something like that i'm never going to use that i'm not going to display it with that up so I, I mean i'm okay with this i will say that i wish that the crossbow that she came with was a little bit of a better fit mm. and then they've added that giant quiver to go along with it she also has that web gear that she's not pictured with in any of these. So it was almost like they were like, well, I guess if you don't like this part, cover it up with this, <laughs> even though it doesn't really fit the figure. So I don't really envision me using that either. But again, maybe I'm being very forgiving because I really love the character and the figures of Scarlet. I think this figure's solid. I really do. I really want this figure. Also, if you haven't heard, we were getting reports that this Scarlet figure is only one per case which is a drastic difference than how the Retro Wave 1 was shipping, which was basically equal distribution, right? I saw the whole case, the whole shipper, but by the time the guy brought it out to me, it got mixed around. So it's hard to say 100%, but it seemed pretty much equal. Maybe, maybe a few less Baroness, if I had to if I had to take a stab at any of them being less. It seemed like she might have been the, the slightly more, but I mean, the, the shipper had quite a few action figures. I mean, it was, like, I'd say there's at least least probably 25 action figures on there i i think there's a little bit of information that to, to back that up not just based on what we're hearing but also that on the walmart website scarlet's the only figure that you can't pre-order any longer mm -hmm. so that does kind of suggest that there are less of them that are going to be out there in the wild so again really like this figure and that brings us to the last thing they announced this is the only thing that we didn't know was coming and that's that they are releasing the Cobra Fang. Jaren, do you want to talk about, have you ever seen a Cobra Fang before? I'm going to take a guess say no. No, I have not. But man, it looks cool. Yeah, you want to talk about this a little bit? So it looks like just kind of the the standard small light aircraft for Cobra. It looks exactly like I would imagine they would design a small light aircraft. There is no cockpit or no cover over the cockpit. There's a lot of things exposed, a lot of the machinery you can see. It looks like they were like, hey, how can we easily produce a vast amount of these and really pump them out for our army and Cobra Commander greenlit it? Um, but it is the coolest little design. I love the fact that the, the small turret on the front is rotating and pivots and you know you can really aim it around. I like that it has the giant Cobra missile underneath. I think it looks really cool. These are another one of those things that if they could just supply them, I would buy probably like four of them. Yeah, I have never had a substantial love for the Cobra Fang. I think it does have some charm. I'm especially fond of the like rotating 360 degree gun that's on the front. You can just kind of move around. It looks like the bla the helicopter blades on this are much thicker than the ones I remember. But I have noticed that they have, I guess due to the change in, in like plastics or availability, they've made some altercations to the vehicle the his tank is a perfect example the his tank is no longer made of the same style plastic like that little canopy cover is is something different i don't know what it is but this looks like the same case where they've they've made one small adjustment 
the thing that interests me most about the Fang isn't the vehicle, it's the pilot. And the pilot design is pretty good. Got a standard Cobra Blue, not really based on anything because the Fang didn't come with a pilot originally. And I don't know what it is, but I am obsessed with the fact that when you take this guy's helmet off, he has this beautiful brown wavy hair. <laughs> so my first question is, does that mask come off? And I'm going to guess if it did, they would have shown us. But I feel like they, I feel like it really should. That would be really cool if it did. So I'm wondering if that's an, is that a new head mold? Is that an existing head mold that I can't put together? Did they use an old head mold and glue the face mask on it so that you wouldn't be able to be like, Pop, oh, this is Blowtorch. I can't believe it. <laughs> but I'm, I'm very interested in this figure. I wish he wasn't just called Cobra Pilot. I wish he, they had made him like a Air Viper or even better, a new character but these are great introductory vehicles i get that they wanted to test the market with affordable vehicles first and i think they've done a great job of that every vehicle that they've released so far has been something that's popular is something that they had easy access to and i think that they hope that they will see that the support for these is there at that price point at the very least and maybe that will encourage them to try to take a step up and move on to the next largest vehicle that they still have availability to it has not been a tremendously long time since we've seen a variation of the fang so it doesn't shock me to see it other than the fact that it was the only thing we didn't know was coming and i would also i would pick up a couple of these despite the fact that i already have a few they reuse this a lot in the relaunch of the modern era so i'm wondering what else they do have access to because we know they sold off a lot of molds guarantee you they don't have any, they're not sitting on anything big anymore probably even anything from as recent as the modern era so if they continue to pump these out i'm wondering what else we could potentially see down the line yeah that'll be interesting to see i mean i want as many as they can be um you know i think i've made it pretty clear for anybody who's listened that I am predominantly a six inch guy, but if you're telling me I can get things like this with a figure and a small vehicle like this for the same price, pretty much as a six inch figure, it's going to be hard for me to pass it up. Like if I'm, if I'm going in and I'm only buying one thing, it's going to be hard to pass up this guy for $25 as opposed to, you know, another stormtrooper for 20. I would like to see the exclusivity lifted from these and see a larger distribution based on interest. I would say that when they first announced these, they are they were getting bombarded with negative feedback because these aren't quote unquote retro. Not an unfair criticism, but it turns out that in the long run, people didn't care as much as we thought they would because they're uh, people have been just grabbing them left and right. The second hand market is pretty scorching hot on them right now, and people are going in and buying. Uh, you know, they'll say, "Oh, we got a case of." They come in threes. And some people will just go, well, I'll take all three. So would like to see these carried at more retailers and a chance to really uh, show them that the demand is there to continue to branch out or, God forbid, make new tooling and make new figures. <laughs> yes, please. But I will say this. I have been able to pre-order all these through the website. As of the time of this recording, the Fang is still available for pre-order. Uh, so at least there's that. I just wish that the shipping wasn't so slow. Like, I literally pre-order this, and there are already people picking them up in the store, and these are saying to not expect them till January, which I believe, because Retro Wave 1, which I also pre-ordered, still hasn't shipped yet. And, I mean, it's it's a bit of a mess, but at least I do know that there's I have the possibility to lock them in. I just have to be patient, which I'm not. <laughs> yeah i am uh i'm ready to get my awe striker that's definitely the one that i am the most excited about yeah i'm definitely still in the market for anything i can find at a retail level it's just been a bit of a a bit of a hunt seems like a lot of stuff that's been shipping to stores across the board is does not get a lot of uh replenishment hey you see one sometimes two and then that's it that is makes the marketplace very competitive um, so you really have to be, you really have to be on top of your game for some of this stuff. Yeah. It's going to be, it's going to be a fight in the toy aisle for a bunch of 30 to 40 year old men. I always like wear my GI Joe shirt out. And then I obviously I have a GI Joe tattoo so I can be like, listen, mister, I'm not a scalper. It's me. GI Joe fan. See my GI <laughs> Joe shirt and my GI Joe tattoo. What is an eBay? Please bring me your toys and let me buy them. <laughs> what is an eBay? So... <laughs> 
that's going to bring it to the end of this section. Thanks so much for listening. We hope that you are enjoying the content that we have provided. If you haven't checked out the Find Your Fate episode that we posted on YouTube recently, I highly encourage it. It was a tremendous amount of fun to record, and we put a lot of effort into making it uh, an entertaining, viewable experience. Thanks to Psycho Drive-In for hosting us, and thanks to all of you for listening. And that's going to do it for us here on Anything Joe's, where anything's available for discussion, and anything goes. Thank you.